Welcome to the Love and Lattes podcast, a coffee lover's guide to good vibes, books, rom-coms, and everything in between. Now grab some coffee and let's get chatting. Hi, this is Nancy Nagel, and I am the author of And Then There Was You, and I am here on the Love and Lattes podcast. Well, thank you so much for talking with me again. I really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. I know you're so busy and you have a new book out just all the time. It seems like you're so successful and everyone loves everything you do. So congratulations on your latest novel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And then there was you. Um, Sounds very cute. I was reading the description and finding as much as I could uh, about it online. Do you want to tell everyone um, what the storyline is about and kind of where it's set? Because it sounds like it's a beautiful setting. <laughs> Oh gosh, it is such a beautiful setting. It's the first book in my new series set in Chestnut Ridge, and that is a fictional town in the Blue Ridge Mountains. So it is a beautiful town with wonderful community and fun shops and quirky neighbors <laughs> that know all about everybody's business. Um, but this story is, um, it's kind of unique and special to me. You know, there are so many things and ripped from the headlines, and Netflix and all that stuff, you know, with the Tinder swindler and inventing. Anna, you know, where people just are not who you think they are. And in this story, um, our heroine, Natalie, has just come home from this amazing all-inclusive resort in Cancun. And she's had this wonderful time. Even the baby turtles you know, were being, you know, the, the, the sea turtles were coming on shore and nesting while they were there. I mean, it couldn't have been a more perfect trip. Her guy ends up having to leave early and sets up spa dates for her and all kinds of stuff for her to finish the trip while he leaves early. And when she gets home, she is greeted to an empty house. Like, and of course her first reaction is that something has happened to him and, and she's frantic. And, uh, and as the detective gets assigned to the case, all the pieces start falling together that she's been a, a victim. She's been conned out of everything she's got. And so it's a story of her journey towards regaining her confidence in herself and trust in not only herself, but others and uh, getting back on her feet again. And she ends up in Chestnut Ridge in the old fishing cabin that her late husband had. Um, and so her girlfriend's like, oh my gosh, you are not going to that fishing cabin. <laughs> Because she is a girly girl, but uh, but she does. And uh, the community really comes together for her. And it's a beautiful journey. I hope people are going to love taking it with her. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's, <laughs> uh, it's very relevant in today's world. Um, you hear about all of these different dating scams. And it's really sad because all someone wants is to find love. And then they find themselves in a rather unfortunate situation. But at least with your novel, it all works out. <laughs> yes, it will all work <laughs> out in the end. Yes, absolutely. In the novel, it does. And and you're right. I mean, it's it's so scary. And a lot of the very same things that we look for, you know, we want to be swept off our feet, you know, fall in love and swept away so quickly. But a lot of those things that, you know, are red flags are also what we yearn for in love. So it's really a, a very thin line. Um and hard to, to identify. And these cons, man, they can take advantage of anybody. So, uh, so yeah, I was happy to be able to tell that story and, and give some, I don't know, just kind of some unjaded, uh, you know, advice through the whole story too, on, you know, how to deal with it and how to not blame yourself, those kinds of things. My goodness. Well, I'm sure um, there's going to be a reader out there somewhere who stumbles upon your book and starts reading it. And maybe it's like, Hmm, I, I should start maybe paying more attention or, oh, that sounds like something I might be experiencing. And maybe, maybe you're going to help some people through this. I mean, that would be an amazing, um, like extra benefit to your, to your story. Well, it would be a good extra benefit. It sure would, but hopefully they will just read it, enjoy it, shake their head and be just rooting Natalie on to get justice in the end. You know, read, relax, repeat. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, and what's so nice, like, sounds like with this story, it's like something maybe a little bit negative ends up being something super positive. And then she will find her true love in an unexpected person. So it all works out in, in a weird way. Life is so weird like that. You just never know um, what closed doors will open another window. Exactly. Yeah. And there's a whole nother uh, theme in the story about finding family and, and community and things like that too. So yeah, I think it'll... 
Uh, I think it'll be an enjoyable read for folks. And I just turned in the next book set in that town. So it won't come out until 2024, but there will be a Christmas in Chestnut Ridge next year. And uh, so people will be able to go back to Chestnut Ridge, learn more about Natalie and Randy and more about some of the secondary characters that are now going to be face forward in the second book. <laughs> Yes, I totally caught that on your website. I saw Christmas at Chestnut Ridge, which I believe is the title. I saw that and I was like, wait a second, I saw on this book, it said a Chestnut Ridge novel on the bottom. So I was like, this has to be some sort of follow up. And you just confirmed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited because I'm ready to go back and I'm already ready to go back and write the third book. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. Do you, so the second one's set like in a Christmas kind of time frame, which is always so fun. Um, do you have any idea like for the third one, what like maybe season it might be set in? I'm thinking it's going to be a springy story. <laughs> That's, Lots of That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll be, I think that'll be fun, but it's just, we're just getting started on that. So we'll see how it falls out. <laughs> Absolutely. That's so fun. And then like I said, in the mountains of Virginia, I mean, that region of the country experiences such beautiful seasons, the fall foliage and the bright green spring and summer. So that's such a, a fun location. Yeah. So I live up here in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And so the town of Chestnut Ridge is sort of a play on the area that I live in, but maybe a little higher on a mountain than I am. Um, I live kind of at the base of one of the mountains, but uh, yeah, it's beautiful. I live about four miles from Lover's Leap and, you know, just being able to stand there and look out over the valleys and seeing all those colors or at Christmas seeing all the twinkling lights down there I mean it's just so beautiful of course right now they're expanding the road up there so it's really not all that gorgeous <laughs> there's a lot of construction on the mountain this year but next year we're gonna be in good shape <laughs> that's so funny yeah it's always it's a little bit of growing pains I guess when you're going through that but then but then it'll be nice smooth sailing nice roads when they're done <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I know when I last talked to you, um, it's funny, actually, you were one of the very first guests on the podcast about two years ago. So I want to thank you for um, taking a chance on someone who was totally kind of new to the game. But Aww. you mentioned that you had like a Pinterest board, I believe, for kind of like each book. Is that still the case with this? Um, yeah, book? yeah, I do. I still do that. And, you know, I don't do it so much for my re the readers as I do it for myself, you know, as I'm just beginning to build that story out. And I do a big paper one in my uh, you know, I have an easel and I'll put the big cardboard on there and I'll print out pictures and do like a collage. And that kind of helps me keep centered on what my people look like and the area I have. And I'm always like doing their family tree, but I love putting pictures that are motivating me as I'm out there, usually procrastinating. <laughs> In writing, um, you know, I'll do research on all kinds of stuff. And so, you know, it might be, you know, information about beehives or baby bears or whatever, but adding those things to my Pinterest board so that I've got something just to kind of remember that journey of writing the book. And, um, and they're all out there. There's, there's a, there's a board for every book out there. So people can go out and kind of see where my brain was. And the funny thing is sometimes you'll go back and look and I'll have like a ton of pictures about one subject and it'll only be in the book, like a page or two, right? Cause I've done all this research on it just to learn this little piece of information, but I was so excited about it. I just took tons of pictures. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. It's, yeah, it's like a vision board. Um, you know, and it's funny, like you said, you put so much research into maybe one specific um, topic, and then it only comes up like one or two um, spots in the book. It's like a final exam you study for. And you know, there's this one topic, and you study like crazy. And it's like, one question on like a 50 question, question exam. And you're like, well, and I better it's the have one gotten that one, right? Remember, right? <laughs> it's like, right. Um, what was that year? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <Yes. laughs> That's so fun. I love that. And you also mentioned like the secondary characters. Those are so important. I don't know. Have you ever seen Gilmore Girls? I have. <laughs> okay. You know, then like the townspeople kind of like you said, they're kind of fun and eccentric. The townspeople of Stars Hollow are so quirky and they really add to like the overall story. Do you want to talk about any specific side character that you just really have fun creating? Oh gosh. Yes. Well, you know, and there's uh, the whole cast of kind of uh, zany, colorful characters in this book. But one of my favorites is Oreen, and she's an older lady who lives in this big, beautiful old home. And it 
her her granddaughter had come and decided she was going to turn it into a B and B at one time. So it's on the internet as a B and B. But of course, the the granddaughter never really made it happen because the granddaughter didn't really intend to work it. She just wanted to make some money off her grandmother's house. So um, that's how. Uh, Natalie actually ends up meeting Oreen is that she sees this, there's this B&B in town and tries to go get a room. And of course she doesn't even rent rooms, but Oreen is this uh, eccentric old woman. She's like the uh, matriarch of the town. She knows everybody. She has her thumb on the pulse of everything going on in Chestnut Ridge. She just takes care of everybody. She's a wonderful cook and she collects teapots and she's got one whole room that's just full of teapots. And uh, her late husband had built these glassed in shelves um, so that, that she wouldn't have to dust them all the time. And she is still adding to that collection. And I just love her. She's got this kind of hidden dream of having a tea room, but she's never done it. And now she's in her eighties and I have a feeling somewhere along this series, she's actually going to do something with that. Uh, but not in these first two books. So um, y'all have to stay tuned to see if Irene finally gets a tea shop, but uh, I love her. She is just so full of great advice and so down to earth. And she's just fearless. Like, don't we all want to be fearless when we're old, say what we want to say, do what we want to do. <laughs> And even the fire chief is having to run her off fire scenes, you know, because she shows up with lemonade, you know, to, but the guys are going to need sustenance. <laughs> and he's like, really, Irene, you got to go. <laughs> She's just trying to help out. Linda, helping hand. She sounds exactly, like that's funny. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, I hope she gets her tea room. Tea rooms are so fun. I love the teapot collection. What a fun um, idea for a collection. I, I just haven't thought of that or heard of that before. Yeah, it's funny because one of the teapots in the second book, um, she ends up getting a teapot as a gift from somebody. And I probably spent a day and a half looking at different teapots online. And then I found this cute Merry Christmas teapot and it had um, chestnuts roasting over an open fire. And of course it's in Chestnut Ridge. And so I made that the teapot as the gift in that second book and the Christmas book. So of course I had to order one. So now I've got one on my bookshelf. Oh, that's so perfect. Like a little I, memento from like your process. Teapot. I really don't, but I just couldn't resist. <laughs> so oh, maybe I'll so give it away at surprise when I let out the second book. <laughs> Hey, that's a fun idea. You could even make it into like a little um, vase or pl like planter thing of some sort and get a little creative with it. Yeah, I guess it's really, it's got adorable scenes on it, but the last thing I need is a teapot. <laughs> I mean, I do love tea, but I also have a ton of teapots. <laughs> See, you already have a collection yourself. It's so easy to kind of get carried away with like, you like one thing, then you like another thing. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you have 20 frog figurines that you never planned on having. <laughs> Or, you know, when I, since I wrote the red truck books for the, you know, Christmas and evergreen stuff, oh my gosh, the number of red trucks I have is ridiculous. I mean, I've always loved them. So I was buying them and I have readers giving them to me. I have friends giving them to me as gifts. And uh, so, yeah, I've got little red trucks galore. <laughs> those little red trucks are so cute. And I've noticed, like, I think right when you were writing those, they became super popular at Christmas time. Now I even see little trucks, not necessarily red, but like at Easter, they're carrying some carrots in the back or at 4th of July, they have fireworks in the back. And the ones so with these the pumpkins, trucks right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah they're, they're everywhere. So and I'm kind of a old car junkie. I love old cars. And so, um, and I had actually written an old blue pickup truck in Christmas Joy. It didn't make it into the movie, but in the book, Christmas Joy, um, there's a tree, Christmas tree farm, and they have an old blue truck uh, down at the foot of the tree farm, and it's on the honor system. You put your money in the glove box and take a tree from the trunk, <laughs> from the bed of the truck. Yeah, it didn't make it into the movie, but um, but it's definitely in the book. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. So many of your books are adapted into like Hallmark movies, for example. Um, and it's so fun to like, compare and contrast and see what made it into the movie. And if there was maybe a, an extended cut you could ever get to see if all of the things made it into the movie, that would be fun. <laughs> I, I know. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. And for the most part, you know, it, it's funny because it was such a good education for me. I mean, you always 
you know, think, well, why wasn't that in the movie, you know, and, and I would get bent out of shape watching movies that I had read the book and loved. And, and you don't ever realize that that 90,000 word novel has been turned into a 20,000 word screenplay. I mean, that's not much room to expand your wings, right? So some of those secondary characters, you know, are going to fall to the floor. Some of those things are going to be tightened up. And some things that work great in books just don't work on the screen. So um, so I understand more why they're so different, um, but it is fun to compare, you know, what's, what's the same, what's different. <laughs> Absolutely. Or you, maybe you have like in your mind, an actor's face when you are writing a character, just like the look or something. And then when they finally cast it, they may not be anything like you imagine. That's always, I'm sure that's a weird experience for you to see like these characters come to life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It is strange because, you know, you definitely have images in your mind of what those people look like, what they sound like, kind of what their attitudes are. And, and sometimes they are very different. <laughs> You never know. Everyone's interpretation of um, the same thing can be quite different. Uh, I am curious, like, I'm sure I would not be surprised at all if this was made into a movie. Um, such an interesting storyline, too. Um, I could see it going outside of Hallmark just because, like, it's such a kind of a trendy topic about, like, the dating world a little bit, like, in this dating scams and overcoming that. But who would you like to see play um, the roles of Natalie and Randy? Oh, gosh. That is so hard. And I'm already on, you know, my third book since then, but I, I'd have to pull up my, I should have to print, pull up my dream book and get back to you and tell you who I had cast. Cause I always do like pictures of the people that are in my mind and I can't remember who they were right this minute. You know, Randy, I've got, you know, this dark, good looking detective. And there are so many of those kind of guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not when I never find one like that. <laughs> I'll have to look. I don't remember who I had cast for that. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to look and see how it's kind of evolved since you've written a couple more of these, or and you're in the process of it. That's so fun. Um, I was gonna say it's always like you'll see these people on the screen, and you're like, I never see anybody like that in my town. Where do you live? Are you even real? <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> well that's why these movies and these books are so fun to kind of like transport you to like this dream world with these amazing people um that I guess exist somewhere on planet earth <laughs> well you know and it's funny because you're know, living out here in Patrick Springs I mean I I tease all the time but it is true I mean this community is really like those hallmark or fictional communities. I mean, people are so wonderful. They're so helpful. You now I've got a man across the street that mows my lawn and, um, you know, he charges me the exact same price that he charges his sister, which I just love. I think it makes me feel like family, you know, but every time I pay him, like he's bringing me cake or he's bringing me veggies from his garden, you know, and I'm like, don't, you know, like I'm trying to pay you and you're bringing me more stuff than I'm paying you. <laughs> doing all the work. And then I have another neighbor that's mowing the pastures because I have 25 acres um, out here and um, there's just a lot to take care of. And um, I just feel so blessed to have such good people all around me. You know, uh, my mom had that knee surgery and you know, my neighbors are calling and checking on her or stopping in. And um, I'm very grateful for that. It's a wonderful place to live. That's amazing. Well, it definitely sounds like you found the right community for you and you have a beautiful property. It sounds like, um, that's awesome. Wow. Uh, I think you're living your best life, Nancy. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. I love that. So sweet. Would you like to talk about how you found yourself becoming an author full time? Oh gosh. Yeah. You know, I never dreamed of being an author. I was always a big reader. I'd always loved reading books, um, but I knew from the time I was a little girl that I wanted to be a career girl. I was so excited. Could not wait to get into the big business world. I was a senior vice president with Bank of America in technology. And the year I turned 40, my job was to ship technology positions offshore. And it was a very good business case and, and I understood it, but it was a hard thing to do to, you know, eliminate positions from, you know, people that I had worked with or had worked for me for years. And I knew how good they were at their jobs. 
And so I started struggling a lot with, you know, just on a personal level, you know, what my contributions were to the world. I knew I was doing a good job for the bank, you know, (laughs) but for me and, you know, my friends, my family, the world around me, was I really doing the right thing or the best things that I could be doing? And I thought, you know, if I could write one book to help one girl through one bad day, that would be amazing. And so that's what I set out to do. And it took me nine years. I wrote on my vacations, on my coast to coast airplane trips. I teased that I missed an opportunity. I should have dedicated my very first book, Sweet Tea and Secrets to US Airways because I wrote on the plane all the time. And back then you had enough room to open your laptop. These days you can't hardly even open your laptop to to type in, you know? Yeah. And I, I, you know, still wrote nine books before that winter of 2013, when my husband was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer and I lost him that following January in 2014. And I knew right then that my life was going to change and that I was going to do nothing but try to share joy. And so I took an early retirement from the bank and have been writing ever since uh, full time and have never looked back. And I am so grateful for the opportunity to do that and to hopefully bring a little sunshine into people's lives and help, you know, when, when times get tough for folks to realize that, you know, things will look brighter again and, and there are people and and help all around us. So those are the kind of stories I write. I hope that they're full of hope and inspiration and help people gather their strength to take a next step. My goodness, that's very inspirational. Yeah, it's kind of like you had to trust your moral compass on what you felt good about doing with your job. And you transitioned um, with life changes. And it sounds like you definitely made the right choice and it makes you happy. So that's that's what counts. It makes others happy too. <laughs> yeah, it makes me very happy. And I love meeting readers. And, you know, when somebody t- tells me that a story got them through a tough time or they were able to share it with somebody, I and mean, that is just the biggest compliment I could ever get. I just am so grateful to be able to make friends and you know meet people that you know have been in similar situations um, and be able to share that and uplift each other. That's absolutely right. I'm thinking about, oh gosh, it was a Hallmark movie that came out this spring. It was one of the Wedding Veil movies with Allison Sweeney oh, and Victor that. Webster. And yes. it's kind of, it, that was a really good one. Did you watch where they went to Greece? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. I love it. Well, <laughs> it was amazing. And they're such good actors. But there was a scene when they're um, considering, you know, adopting the little boy. I believe his name was Leo, I think. And the headmaster of the school is like, he doesn't need to do anything in the arts. It's not a reliable career. And then Allison tells the headmaster, well, let's think about this. What do you do for fun? He's like, well, I go to the opera and I listen to my favorite song. And I read my favorite book and it makes me happy. And she said, well, those are all forms of art reading your favorite book someone created that an artist created everything you enjoy so I think it's so interesting how everyone's outlets are pretty much created to some art form like reading your book yeah yeah well I mean yeah getting down to the basics you know somebody is creating all those things that we love and appreciate and enjoy and yeah (laughs) I love those movies too they're great (laughs) Oh, they're so fun. I figure they're going to make more. Um, it'll be interesting. Oh, to see I think so too. And, and because we're all dying to know what's going to happen next and all those relationships. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It's so fun. I'm so glad someone thought to continue on move with movies like that because that doesn't happen too often. Um, but it's amazing. <laughs> and I'm glad you enjoy them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I do have to remind everyone to purchase. And then there was you. I'm going to link Nancy's website. I'll link the um, link (laughs) to the book so you can order it as well. I'm sure it's going to be a huge, huge hit and become a bestseller, but I would love to finish up with rapid fire questions if that's all right with you. Ooh, that sounds fun. Let's do it. (laughs) Okay. Let's do it. Um, (laughs) What is the last show you binge watched? Oh gosh. The last show I binge watched. Um, Does the bachelorette count? (laughs) Oh, it totally counts. (laughs) Or The Bachelor and now into The Bachelorette. Yes. <laughs> Mom and I oh, sit and watch perfect. them and rewatch them. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, those are so fun. And what is your go-to coffee drink? Oh, I love, and it's a cheapo drink, but it's Walmart, great value, toasted coconut, light brew coffee. It is my favorite. Nothing fancy. Just uh, that toasted coconut is just enough. 
I know the exact one you're talking about. I think I get it in a K cup form. That's such an interesting yes, me flavor. too. And it's the turquoise yeah. color. I don't know, the box is pretty. <laughs> it's like my color. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. You're going to have to put that on one of your uh, vision boards sometime. <laughs> I will. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fun. Great choice with a little bit of vanilla, a little stevia. You've got a good awesome. mixture of coffee oh, flavors. Yes. <laughs> Great not choice. Not it's in the coffee section. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fun. I love that. Um, And do you have a favorite rom-com? Oh gosh, I do. I have a million of them, but I, oh, which one am I going to pick? Um. Oh my gosh, I love them all. I'm going to say you've got mail because I always go back to it. <laughs> Plus she has a bookstore, you know? <laughs> yes. I was just thinking that exactly. I'm not surprised at all because there's definitely, uh, oh, why are you barking at me? It's a big literary <laughs> aspect in the movie. Um, sorry, someone's sassy. Um, anyway, um, do you have a favorite ice cream flavor? Oh, I'm mint chocolate chip. <laughs> My goodness. I tell you what, that is the most popular answer. And then finally, where's a place you'd like to visit that you have not yet traveled to? I want to go to Iceland and I hopefully see the Northern Lights. Can you imagine? That would be amazing. I hope you get to go. I know. Yeah, I've been to Alaska. was not able to see the Northern Lights while I was there. I am going to Glacier National Park later this month and I'm going to be pretty up close to Canada. I'm, I'm going to keep my peepers open every night. Maybe we'll get lucky. But if not, I've had my eye on a trip to Iceland to be able to see those Northern Lights and Iceland just looks so beautiful. I'm going to recommend, I found it. There's an app it's like the Aurora forecast app or something like that. And it lets you kind of know where the lights are going to be and like how far south they're going to be. So you might download that. For your oh, trip. I will. And so, what do you think yeah. it's called? It's called my Aurora forecast. My Aurora forecast. I'm downloading it right now. <laughs> you do awesome. that. And maybe Thank it'll help you. you. I will. I'm going to make my, I'm going to increase my chances of making that happen. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I definitely hope that dream comes true for you. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Nancy. This has been so fun. Yes, it has been. I can't wait to talk to you again. Oh, absolutely. We will talk when your next book comes out. And I'm going to have a latte while I'm listening to it. <laughs> oh, you should. A coconut latte, of course. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's Good so luck fun. with everything. Well, Reach out anytime oh, I can do you. something for you. Uh, thank you so much. You as well. If I can help promote anything at all, you just um, send the word and I'll do it. Yeah. But you have a great rest of your day. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can be notified of all the new episodes. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much for listening to the Love and Lattes podcast. Have a great day.